Hey guys, um, today we're going to be doing something a little different. Um, I decided, I had this idea in my head for a special series that I wanted to do, and it brings up my series count dramatically. Um, I had it in my mind that it, during a dream last night that I was cutting a promo, a wrestling promo, on just random characters from anything, from anime, from cartoons, from movies, and I had this idea why not do it as a series on my channel? It's going to be called Hashtag Wrestling Promos. And I also... This is going to be a series where I'm going to ask you to contribute. Um, I've done four promos for this video. I hope you enjoy them. And leave a comment in the comment section. And let me know what characters you'd like me to cut a promo on next. But anyways guys, enjoy these promos, and before I go on, I'd like to say, these are for satirical purposes only, they're just for a bit of fun, I'm not. I'm hoping not to offend anybody, but if you are offended, I'm not sorry. Um, but anyways guys, enjoy these promos, thank you very much. Pikachu! Pikachu! Pika Pika! Ah, oh, this fucking does my fucking head in. This piece of crap. You know, you annoy me most of all. You... <clears throat> you annoy me most of all, Pikachu. You are the poster child for Pokemon. And it's been that way since 1997. It annoys me so much. Your little yellow face, your little red cheeks, all that electricity. It annoys me so bad. And the fact is, you will never evolve. Your trainer is just too stupid to evolve you, to give himself a bigger edge in Pokemon matches. It doesn't matter that he has a terrible win-loss record, does it? He's got you, Pikachu. It doesn't matter that he's only ever won one league. It's okay, because he's got you, Pikachu. You know what he's got? He's got a little yellow fur ball of bullshit. You're nothing. You're absolutely nothing. You bring your yellow tail, your red cheeks, the black points on your ears. When I show up to the Pokemon League on August 17th, we're going to have the showdown to end all showdowns. And if you think you're taking this title from me, I'm going to take your iron tail, choke you out with it, and then I'm going to shove it up your ass. And Ed and Eddie, they think they're going to take this title from me. They think they're going to take what's mine. You guys couldn't even get yourself oversized gobstoppers when all the odds were in your favor and it screwed you up. So, you can have the title. You can have it because you're not a champion like I'm a champion. Now, you see this. You guys went to the wrestling world for five minutes. Five minutes, and the Canker Sisters turned you upside down and turned you into pancakes. And every time, every goddamn time, you guys come up with a new scheme to get yourself those jawbreakers. You fail. You fold. What makes you think that when I come to the Cul-de-Zac, to the Cul-de-Zac Wrestling Championship, when I come there with my title on the line against you three numbskulls, then I'm going to lose it to any one of you. Eddie, the short one, oh, I'm sorry, 
Is that going to do your head in? Is that going to make you very, very angry? Because that's what short people do. They get angry whenever anybody ever mentions their height. And Double D, so intelligent, such a mind. He is so great in the mind department, but that's all your strength. And the fact that you're hanging out with bozos makes you damage goods. Your mind could be put to better talents, but you waste it. And Ed, well, there's a place for people like you. It's called a mental asylum. You couldn't hurt me even if you wanted to. Your sister does more damage. And that's the way it is. You all try to get money to partake in sucking sweets that makes you look like you're doing something that is not very 3 PG-13. I swear to God that when I bring my championship to the cul-de-sac, I am going to take you all on three on one. No advantage for me. And guess what? You're going to fold. You're going to fail again. I'll see you in the cul-de-sac, Eds. And in a perverse way, you're gonna get what you want. Your jaw's broken! Garrus Vicarian, the champion of Omega, the Archangel, the master of the sniper rifle, and the master of calibrations, if I heard it correctly. But I'm gonna tell you this, Vicarian, when I come to Omega, when I come to the Omega Arena, when I take a trip in my nice spaceship and come all the way out there to that colony, you're going to fold. When you meet me in the ring, you're going to fold. That sniper rifle will do you no good. Commander Shepard will do you no good. Joker will do you no good. Samara will do you no good. Thing Krios will do you no good. None of the Normandy crew is going to help you in this match. Because when it comes down to it, Vicarian, I'm a human. And humans are physically superior to the Turians. Yeah, I went there. Little good, good old racism. You think I forgot Shanxi? You think I forgot the first contact war? Just like then, the Turians are going to fold. And if you come trying to take this from me, then the scars on your face are going to be the worst of your problems. Because I'm going to recalibrate every organ in your body into Spaghetti Junction. Talk about your honor. Talk about being the right-hand man of Commander Shepard. And where did it get you? Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere, Vicarian. C-Sec kicked you out. You may like to play it off as you quit, but C-Sec got rid of you because you wouldn't listen to them anymore. You wanted to be like Commander Shepard, your hero, your butt buddy. And where did it get you? Absolutely nowhere. Managing to piss off all three of the major gangs in Omega at the same time. You know, that is actually quite an impressive feat. I will give credit where credit's due. But one of these days, they're going to take your goddamn head off. Your Turian head is going to be detached from your little shoulders. And nobody... Not a soul on the Normandy, not Commander Shepard, not Miranda, not Samara, none of them will be able to help you, Garrus. And I'm going to tell you this right now. You may have heard it in Earth's extranet vids, but when I come to Omega and I'm standing over your Torian corpse, your fallen Torian corpse, the champ is here.
you know, years ago, and even today, it keeps getting shown on television. There was this kid with spiky hair where the hairline was not seen, where it was camouflaged into his head. That kid, his name was Bart, and I dug Bart. I really dug him because he got away with a lot of things. He got away with being a rebel. He got away scot-free. He, he did very, very well for himself by breaking all rules, but having a heart of gold. See, that's where you went wrong, Bart. I always dug you because you were a rebel. And you did things by your own terms. But you went wrong. As the years progress, I think you've gone very, very soft. When I come to Springfield on September the 3rd, you're going to find out exactly what I'm all about. Being a rebel, I learned from the best. It's just a problem that the best is not the best at it anymore, now that I'm on the scene. Bart Simpson, you're coming for my championship. What are you going to do? Van Daminator with a skateboard? Already been done. You're going to imitate any of those foul, crass, crap moves from The Simpsons Wrestling. A really, really terrible game. What, you going to do any of that? It'll be useless against me. And I'll also tell you one other thing. Homer Simpson will not be able to save you, your daddy. Your mommy and daddy will not be able to save you from the beating I'm going to give you in the Springfield International Arena. Mr. Burns has paid me very handsomely to come down and defend my championship against you. But for me, it's not about the money. For me, it's about the recognition that your old friend Sideshow Bob would never get. And he will never get. The recognition I crave is... Hitting you, and hitting you, and hitting you, and unlike your father, throttling you, but not letting go. And on September 3rd, when I roll into that arena with Mr. Burns' money in my pocket, I'm going to have the approval of Sideshow Bob when I grab you and crush your neck down to nothing, just to dust. And maybe Sideshow Bob will pay me handsomely for getting that job done. Either way, it's just money in my bank. And when it comes down to it, Bart, you are outclassed. You're going to need every weapon you can to even have a modicum of a chance to put me down. Just make sure you believe this, Bart Simpson. When I roll into Springfield, I'm going to drop you on your head so many times that you will suddenly remember what made you a rebel in the first place. Because your soft heart is letting you down. It will let you down on September 3rd when I roll in, defend my championship, put this on the line against you, and then I'm going to end you. I'm going to do what Sideshow Bob, Sideshow Cecil, everybody that has come across you has failed to do. I am going to end the legend of Bart Simpson on September 3rd. And I'm going to say this as well. Be ready. Because you don't have a chance in hell of beating me. You really think I'm scared of your little intimidating hockey mask? You really think I'm scared of a machete that could not even kill me? You think I'm scared of a little vat of acid that you could dump my body into and I'd fucking melt to the bone? You really think I'm scared of losing my own blood? Do you really think that, Voorhees? Because when I roll in to the Crystal Lake on October 31st, 
I'm going to do to you what Freddy Krueger should have done. I'm going to put you out of your misery. And if we get too close to the Crystal Lake, guess what? You're going in it. Because no amount of superhuman strength, no amount of being intimidating, no amount of wearing a very scary hockey mask, no amount of superpowers from ethereal beings can help you in our match. Many have tried to take this from me. You Voorhees are just the latest in a long line. Your intimidating hockey mask, it's scary to some of the people. It's not scary to me. Voorhees. Crystal Lake will be your final resting place. No matter how many times you get resurrected, I'm going to keep hitting you and hitting you and hitting you until you actually feel it. And then when you feel it, I'm going to grab your own machete. I'm going to take your head off. This is how this match is going to end. It's not going to be by pinfall. It's not definitely not going to be by the submission. Because I know that you don't quit and I don't quit. It's definitely not going to be an I quit match for the same reason. It's not going to be a standard hardcore match. It's not going to be Hell in a Cell. It's not going to be a case of The Undertaker throwing mankind off a cell into a table. And then mankind getting back up and fighting for the next 30 minutes. Because when I put you down, Jason Voorhees, you're not getting back up. And if we go to the Crystal Lake, you're going to drown. There are only two ways that this match is going to go down, Jason Voorhees. All your ch 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 ha, ha, ha doesn't scare me. The two ways that this is going to go down, it's either I'm going to fucking cleave your head off or you're going to drown in the crystal lake you don't have to be scared of me just know this you're going to lose believe that See you October 31st, punk. Oh, would you believe that? Mickey Mouse has won the Dis Disney Wrestling Rumble. And he's now the number one contender for my championship. And then, on the other side of the world, on the other side of the animated world, the disgusting, stinking animated world, Bugs Bunny just won the Looney Tunes Wrestling Rumble to become number one contender to my belt. So, the match on December 24th, Christmas Eve Rumble, is now a triple threat. Myself, Bugs Bunny, and Mickey Mouse. Now, if you think I'm scared by the odds, that Mickey can pin Bugs, or Bugs can pin Mickey to take this away from me. I'm not scared, because it's not going to happen. Bugs Bunny, with your massive ears, and your carrot, always asking, what's up, Doc, like you're a broken R-Truth record. And then there's Mickey, who sounds like he's been on the helium a bit too much. You stupid addict! You're a stupid Mouse, you are a stupid rabbit. And like Alma Fudd likes to say, it's rabbit season and it's also mouse season. Because on December 24th, on Christmas Eve, I'm going to roll in to the neutral location. I'm going to roll into Madison Square Garden with this championship. And I'm going to beat two legends up. I'm going to destroy Bugs Bunny. I'm going to turn him upside down, hit him with a tombstone pile driver, and break his neck. Mickey, I'm going to pick you up over my head. 
and I'm gonna dump you head first over the top rope. And then you're gonna break your neck. And then when you're both out of it, I'm gonna put you both down with the move that will end your miserable lives. I'm gonna hit you with a package pile driver. It's going to smash you up, and as much as Kevin Owens cannot use that move anymore, I'm taking ownership. I'm going to use the package pile driver to put you both down. Bugs Bunny, you'll never be saying what's up, Doc, again. Elmer Fudd is going to have his way with your remains. And Mickey Mouse, the happiest day in Master Xehanort's life is when he's looking at your remains. Is when he's picking up your keyblade and sticking it in the keyblade graveyard and then sticking both of you in the morgue where your legends should be buried. And on Christmas Eve, ho, 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 Christmas came early this year. I'm walking in, the champion, and guess what? I'm walking out the champion, but behind me, they're going to be scraping your corpses off the mat. And that'll be a sad day for animation, but I'm going to go and celebrate. I'm going to celebrate like a madman, like the madman that I am with this chest hair, with this big belly, with these rolls. And I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate the death of two legends. Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny, R.I.P. December 24th. And I will be drinking all those children's tears. God, that makes me feel so warm and fuzzy inside. See you on Christmas Eve, has -beens. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed those promos. Uh, they were definitely a lot of fun for me to tap into my inner wrestling fan and inner wrestling promo. And to just do it on a random character that... I enjoyed watching and my favourite cartoons, my favourite anime. And as I said at the start of this video, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know who you'd like me to cut a promo on next. And I'll see you for the next video. Peace. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and everything. And if you could for a moment to check out my other videos on my channel. And if you haven't already, subscribe and keep it here for Deadbolt Dragons. Peace.